Part of getting ready for open water season is learning to use your baits properly. There's no better platform for this than fishing through the ice. Many of the same baits that we use for bass and other species in open water are excellent ice fishing baits for whitefish, trout, and walleye. The ice and a camera provide a perfect stable platform to understand what every movement your bait makes when you move your rod. Whitefish make a perfect surrogate for bass. They actually share much of the same habitat and food web, just at different times of the year. So calling them in, striking their curiosity, and making them bite are the same. It's probably true with many species that share the same food web. This whitefish is fixated on a Berkeley water bug. The technique and action that's keeping them there is probably what's going to make them bite. Most anglers overwork baits. With a camera on the ice, you can watch the way fish react to various movements. You begin to understand the relationship between the rod tip and the bait. This stable visual aid allows you to create and catalog to memory various techniques and movements that will come in handy in open water. This will remind you that every movement of your rod tip is amplified at the bait. It's important to use very versatile baits rather than every bait that comes to market. It's difficult to emulate horizontal movements with vertical presentation. A goby scurrying across the bottom is not something you can emulate at any time, but viewing it can teach you the cadence and the stop intervals. Any plastic bait is going to look less than natural, but we're only trying to learn what makes things look edible. Both bass and whitefish are sight feeders. By viewing bait movements under the ice, you get a better understanding of the viewing arena for fish. Of course, they can see much further in the water than you can. There's three things you can take away from this clip. The transition area from rock to sand or gravel is a perfect environment that will hold both bass and whitefish. The second is that there's an action to get attention and another one to get bit. And finally, never give up on a fish just because he's grabbed and spit your bait. This is where scented baits and a consistent action can really pay off. You'll never see a bass touring pro give up on a good fish just because the fish spit his bait the first time and he didn't get a hook set. On the ice, you're not going anywhere anyway. You'll drop your bait down in the same place, use the same action, and hopefully get bit again. In a boat, drifting, most recreational anglers will just cast to the next spot. But watching it happen might give you the confidence just to leave the bait where it is. Don't even retrieve it. On the camera, you can see what subtle moves keep them there and make them bite. But once in a boat, you don't have this stable viewing platform. Even with a sonar on ice, you can't see the finite movements necessary to hold a fish attention and get bit. Whitefish might be a good surrogate for bass, but viewing on this stable platform will go a long way to teaching you how fish react in certain environments and what the relationship is between your bait and your rod. All of this new information will go a long way to a more productive day on the ice and in open water. So next year on the ice, don't hibernate, go back to school.